Hello everyone, <laughs> welcome back. I'm gonna wait for Heimbach to join this um, and that everyone joins. Hello! Hey everyone! How is everyone? A week ago. <laughs> Weeks are going pretty fast, hey? I'm gonna wait. Ha! There he is. <laughs> Hello! Welcome from 30 degrees from Sydney. <laughs> Uh, Heinbach, you can request if you want. Yay, you can. Got it. At work. Oh. Sneaky. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Ah, that's funny. Right now, the external microphone and headphone work, but now it's live, it doesn't work anymore. Interesting. No. Ah, <laughs> Maybe fine. Audio is Maybe fine. I'm in the studio. It's nice and quiet here anyway. I just wanted to say, I hear you loud and clear. Hopefully everyone else as well. Oh, there's India in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm super happy you you joined us here. Um, I looked forward for a long time, I must say, because I know you from your amazing music, actually. <laughs> it's you. really nice, um, especially Ashes. Oh, album thank, oh that's an early one yeah oh yep yeah. <laughs> i was there <laughs> oh lovely lovely to hear yeah. yeah it's great and um of course we know you from youtube um you have an amazing youtube and i probably am i'm one of many that are inspired by what you do and what you explain to us and um yeah do i pronounce it right Heimbach? because you're german Heimbach, right yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy like, for us Dutchies. <laughs> yeah, you need to work. It's, it's like it's like a very German uh, with a ch in the end. Heinbach. Yeah, it is. I <laughs> can it do it. But it your throat nicely also. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Good way of seeing it. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I and the audience will be probably very excited to hear what you got in like, how did you get into music? And um, that is actually my first big That's question. That's a long right? story. <laughs> I, I love long stories. <laughs> so I had to take uh, piano lessons as a kid, as well as tennis. And mm -hmm. I didn't like both of that. <laughs> I didn't enjoy <laughs> tennis and I really didn't enjoy piano lessons. And uh, I tried to find ways to make both like palatable to me. So with tennis, it mostly involved like beating one of the other uh, boys forced to play tennis. And then we would mm. play an alibi half an hour and then we would just sit down in the clubhouse and drink a Coke. <laughs> so um, with uh, piano, it was uh, with piano, I recorded game music because I love playing games on the Amiga and on the C64. And I recorded that onto cassette, gave that to my piano teacher to transcribe. And then I would be able to play all these games, game music like Leisure Suit Larry. And at some point she said, I'm not going to transcribe that for you. That's just an A minor arpeggio. I was like, hmm, A minor arpeggio. That sounds interesting. <laughs> and that got me, like, that um, made that and uh, the music of Bela Bartok, which I love, got me more mm -hmm. like longer into playing the piano than I normally would have. And mm -hmm. then when I was in, I I think the ninth or 10th grade, um, uh, uh, I was asked by a friend, a schoolmate, if I want to join their band because they know I could play keyboards. And they were doing some 60s rock stuff and like very Doors influenced. And I joined up and immediately loved it. I really enjoyed playing in the band. And the first time I was on stage with the band in some kind of battle of the bands, which was actually mm -hmm. the first concert. Uh, I remember playing, I think I played, uh, I think I played this. Oh, headphones. What the fuck? Oh yeah, <laughs> always yeah. happens. So I played like this. Drama would go dish, 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 mm -hmm. and then we would start uh, playing. And 
I remember that and I don't remember anything of the show. So, but that moment that he said, this is what I really want to do for the rest of my life in that moment. And I put everything mm -hmm. behind it to make music, to make more music. Like the goal was never to be famous. It was always about just making music because that would make me happy. I enjoy the process of it. Um, and was there also someone in that time that you were super inspired by? Because I can't imagine that you maybe saw someone like, oh, that's so cool what that person is doing. I mean, lots of the stuff, because of that band, I was very into what Raymond Zarek was doing, melody-wise. But mm -hmm. I really was inspired by, yeah, Bela Bartok was one of the things playing-wise that I really enjoyed. And then I discovered quickly that I really love sound. I love sound in itself. And the mm -hmm. one thing that inspired me and that uh, opened up my world was John Peel, like uh, the radio DJ and the shows that were basically report rebroadcasts of his shows probably taped somewhere and they were on the free radio station and i heard those and i was like what's this music which sounds so this is music is this music and i was really <laughs> interested and there i got to learn a lot more and broaden my horizon and i found labels like warp and reflex and would go to the record store and be like okay what's in there i just need it i just need it and that was really influential to me on the songwriting side um, like one of the earliest bands, the most important band was Radiohead at the time and Nick Cave. Mm. I love both of them uh, a lot. And uh, Kurt Weil and Bert Brecht, uh, the Three Penny Opera. So oh, that's an inter interesting mixture, actually. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> fun. I mean, like, I, if I, would, I have, I have, like, uh, I worked later. I worked a lot in theater. I did a lot of theater music. That was for most of my life the, my main income. So that all came in handy to have like this, like also a way to just to write like songs that are a bit off key and a bit strange, but uh, yeah, a transport a message. Yeah. So, and and how, at the same how... time being in all this noisy, <laughs> strange stuff. Yeah, that's great. But like, you can definitely hear it in what you're doing. So how do you start? Like if you, if you would like make music because you have that background that you just actually yeah, like have a little, um, little insight you gave to us, um, but how you love sound, but how do you create? Where does it start for you? Now or back do, then? Now, do you have like- Now, an okay. Uh, now, or? basically, it, whew, I, I, I just look around. I've got all these machines here and sometimes I just feel like I want to turn on this and I want to turn on this. And what I've really come to love is taking like uh, sound or noise and then filtering it down to its bare bits and re and putting it back together. So I've got a whole bank of, I think I can, oh, it's movable camera. So I've got yes, all these sure. filters here. <laughs> so I've got one, wow. two, three, four of these amazing, strange uh, measurement filters. And that's something that I use, for example, to take a signal from the Juno 60 and then uh -huh. break that up into all its parts so it doesn't sound like a synthesizer anymore it becomes something more subliminal and that's something mm -hmm. i'm very interested in to create sounds that give you like this oh i heard this when i was under narcosis or <laughs> i when <laughs> when like that drill was applied here there, that resonated like this or this to create these sounds that basically make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up so when i can get something like that i'm really interested in like okay so now i can evolve it further and then I build something upon that and it's nice to start with in an inspiring sound and then give it structure and because I mm -hmm. still love the piano and I got this old piano over there I sometimes then just use some a few chords a few notes to give it context if I want or I just try to leave it as wild and strange as it is but it really starts out with a love for sound and sounds that I haven't heard and sounds that inspire me. So even um, the roads, like I love the roads in general, but I can't really play it as a roads. So I've mm -hmm. got the roads for here is split in two channels. One is the clean signal and one is the one that is super messed up. <laughs> and uh, the combination of those makes it interesting for me to play the roads. Wow. That's like a new way for me to hear like how someone creates music. I think it's really inspiring because you basically see more possibilities than the device gives you, basically. 
Yeah. Um, it's like everything, like music is already there. I just need to find it. So that's like, it's different. Yeah. It's not like I have to push something from me. I have, I, I, I find something and then I take that and then shape that. So that's it. Yeah. That's just, I feel like it's just beyond the horizon. I need to find that. And that's why all yeah. the scientific measurement equipment is so great because that is exactly meant to search and find things in noise. And that's where it, where for me, the fun with working with these kind of machines comes from. Yeah. Oh, and has that changed over the years for you? Did you like experience like a massive change in how you approach that or? I mean, the first time that I, that I went into this, that I discovered that I really enjoy this was when um, I realized how the singer in the first band would come up with melodies. And I was asking, how did you come up with the melody? And she said, it's just there. And I was, no, it's not, there's not like that. The notes weren't there. Like I knew the note, so, so not in the piano, not in the guitar, no, no, the notes, are, they weren't there. But then I realized that in the interplay of these notes, like in the overtones, something happened and harmonies are created in the interplay where she just fit in, you know? And I realized, okay, so it is just there. <laughs> so that has been yeah. with me from the beginning and I've only been refining ways to make it more interesting or more 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 precise to do that yeah wow and is there like so for you everything is sound is there also a sound that is for you like a wrong sound like a bad sound that you're like Ugh, that's not what i like uh, there or are sounds that are really bad i mean like the, the horrible like the worst sound that i ever heard was when my then 10 month old kid fell down and 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 on, on, on hard concrete with her head. So uh, that sound, that was the worst sound that I ever heard in my life. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. And, but it wasn't a wrong sound. It was just the worst sound, like the most horrible sound in itself. Like when I remember it, I get chills. So like if I want to, if I, if I were ever to make something truly horrible, <laughs> I would try to recreate that sound and tell a story that binds you emotionally to that sound where it would have a similar thing to it. But yeah. there is no wrong or like, especially with the way that everything here is set up, the, all things can sound fantastic through here because I, uh, I can mess it up in so many ways. It just becomes another little layer. So I don't think there's a bad or worse sound. I mean, no. It comes from context, like, like once you put like a bad meaning to a sound, you know, and the mm -hmm. sound is used to transport a bad meaning, then a sound beca can become bad. But that's like you color it differently. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and maybe wow. then of course the hot, hot okay. Well, there's one sound that's horrible. Another horrible is like hardcore loud feedback from microphones. Like I had a cloud oh. trauma once, you know, when like, <laughs> beep, ah! and then like it'll take cortisone and stuff and was like oh it's horrible so it's that's so also, horrible yeah or if people plug out of the monitor to really avoid like also in my live shows i'm i play very volatile instruments but i'm super uh conscious about the damage that i can potentially do playing these things through big pas so i yeah. always have a compressor on the end and i'm very careful exactly what i do i've seen people like there are amazing musicians but completely ruin like a modular show by patching something in wrong patching it and, and everybody with people are shaking at that volume it hurts you it's horrible so that's something i really avoid and my music is also often designed to be especially live to be super loud it can be super loud but it's still pleasant it's a bit like being at a mogwai show where everything is like super loud and powerful and uh, and still it's it's good for the ear it's like well yeah carved. yeah that's what, what I, do you aspire to yeah exactly <laughs> does um so like you said you use a compressor to to have like an optimal sound and what else do you use in your live set to optimize your sound or what do you bring on your oh, gigs it's just or shows? An i mean like i've got two live sets now one uh, one is uh, my big setup which is uh schlaufenzeit and that's based on a tape loop uh, on an agra. And then all these 1950s, like 1950s German vacuum tube synthesizers in the form of an accordion called an electronium. And then I've got filters by Wandel und Goltermann, which just weighs like 
30 kilograms, 35 kilograms, and it's just a filter, but it's cool to play it because the audience sees immediately the, 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 what's happening. It's, it's, a, it's an electronic music setup that does one thing that I really love. It is completely relatable what I'm doing. There's a direct thing that I'm doing and a direct reaction. It's not like these uh, kind of, I'm the dungeon master behind like a modular, so do, 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 <laughs> kind of thing. So uh, yeah. it is something that's direct and uh, it's also big and stupid and uh, <laughs> now that all these shows canceled again it's like it's like hard to plan it even like you have to get a car i have to get I have a driver also uh, for the longer shows and someone to, like a, so there's a roadie and i decided i needed a smaller setup again so i set everything down in the up in the cellar so there's schlaufen set and then there's my little setup and the little setup is basically I can immediately sample everything I do on the big setup into this Vestax Federball, which is a strange sampler from 2003 that was only made like in small numbers and completely failed. But it's absolutely lovely because it's a sampler you play with faders. And that's my my source of sound, my sample source that runs into the Seattle Lombardi Coco Quantus which is mm -hmm. this 8 bit dual looper with the modulation matrix which can be a synthesizer on its own and it's the the it's like the cork triton of experimental electronic music because you can put anything in there and it creates something beautiful and then i'm using um uh ecolimba by patchpoint it's uh, but it's the bass version so i discovered that once i play that especially with uh, beaters um it becomes it's into the Coco Quantos, it becomes the best drum machine. <laughs> it's such an organic drum machine where you can add all these sounds and create loops. It's just wonderful. So I don't need to bring a drum machine and everything fits into like a carry-on case. So I'm, I'm good. I've got that. Yeah, sort that's, it. That's like how I'm able to have two different live sets that are rehearsable and I play them all the time. And right now I'm recording the Schlaufenzeit album and I'm remixing it at the same time. So... That's wow. going to be something for early 2023, I think. So you will come with two new albums. Yeah, exactly. So what? Nice. The and the remix version. I think that's going to be fun. Yeah, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, is that actually, so you have like those two setups, but are they similar in sound wise or is they, they are also completely different in sound depth? I mean, the, they both they both have one thing. They're very simple and primitive in the eight, and they give a lot of freedom to to experiment and improvise. So Schlaufenzeit is basically a tape loop with in which I play and a space echo and some filters and some things that I can ping and make heavy mm -hmm. drums. And the other thing is like this fader board where I can play the sounds from the other setup and other ones from, from the, and then I've got also this bass kalimba that acts as a drum machine, but it also runs into this, into a loop, which is the Coco Quandos. It's just a different texture of a loop. It's a digital one, but one that, that's very unique. So both allow me the same freedom and improvisation, but they sound different. They sound different. It's, uh, it's, but of course I still make, a similar kind of music, you know, because it's me. So I do music that I enjoy, that I like, and I structure my life sets almost the same. Like um, when I, how I come in, how I go into like the bigger parts, how I break it down, how I end it. So it's very similar to that. Is it improvised or yeah. do you prepare? Nice. Like I play bo both sets like two times and both are improvised. So it's, uh, I, I want to be a bit more concise because if I really record the album, the Schlaufenzeit album, at the time I played these live, n none of these were rehearsed. It was just like, it was just like the way I made it. They were rehearsed, but they were like not recorded or anything. I, I'm very like, I'm very, uh, how you say, um, very careful about recording anything that I want to perform live because I kind of want to keep it fresh. But I think I'm going to go for a bit more planned, at least like have have something that is reminiscent of the album because I've never played one of my albums live. I've basically, I might have taken like a part from something like a tape loop or like an idea, but I've never, never played an album of mine. That sounds actually the way I work same. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, you can always like have your improvisation, but also your 
the tracks that sound like a like a, a full song probably um mm -hmm. so what what if you if you should choose maybe that's a hard question maybe let's not do that like if, at the moment what do you prefer like playing live or if you could play live or being in the studio oh i'm a live musician i love playing live life is i mean i love meeting people and i love uh, i got my first uh, how you say uh, yeah my, my first kick was playing live so i really <laughs> love playing live studios also fantastic but it's a different thing i don't like playing live now so much <laughs> it's like impossible it's <laughs> super frustrating so it's like the one thing that i love is just not there or not like stable or like it's like all the human connection stuff is problematic now and that's like bad so i enjoy it in the studio but i also enjoy working with other artists in the studio then yesterday i had our cosmos here and it was amazing to finally play like this studio as it basically is because this is a studio where you can easily write and create music and we just did that we made uh, uh, one track and the beginnings of a second one like in half a day or something so that wow. is something because this is a music studio i mean all the video stuff is like added in like as an afterthought and badly but it's, it works so um <laughs> it's it's lovely to I, i love working with people so i i'm also fine on my own but i'm also enjoying working with others it just makes everything more fun gives inspiration as well right yeah definitely definitely and you get like it's uh, it's easy to not get any better when you're just doing everything by yourself <laughs> and you get stuck in your own world but as soon as yeah. someone is there da, 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 it's just um, it's just a just a gift if you yeah. can live together i so can yeah i can relate to that um so yeah your studio you're there now um there are some pieces behind you you already yes. showed me like a really cool keyboard <laughs> um can you actually pull it up or not like you showed the me keyboard? already before oh, yes. but yeah. Oh, yeah yeah that's the that's the one that's the fault of bjux i think yes so that that's is the so cool prophecy. yeah <laughs> i always so cool. wanted one of these they were always odd uh and i wanted to try one <laughs> yes. because there's this physical physical modeling thing in there and these weird like these controls i mean they are just like big and, and so they are fun. and this is a cheap keyboard still the one's dirty as hell but yeah so <laughs> i got this uh basically because i read this <laughs> the sims <laughs> gems one yeah. it's a horrible uh, book because yeah. there's so much like this glossy <laughs> glossy pictures of synthesizers like oh doesn't this look nice yes yeah. <laughs> and then you want to have it <laughs> yeah exactly and that was immediately like after i after i got this i was like okay uh can i find one thing i found this one cheaply yeah there's there it is so <laughs> i found this one cheaply and i was like ah okay mm -hmm. this is cool so i i i get this now and you already uh, made music honey you already made music with it no not yet not yet it's like on no. my uh, it's like here i've got the stand over there and it's on my yeah i want to play this but i've uh I had other things to cover. <laughs> It's like uh, <laughs> because of my 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 channel, I get a lot of things like on a hunch and see if it works. And then I, yeah, and then I it takes some time for me to play with with things, especially if mm -hmm. they require some some setup. I've got I've got in my second studio downstairs. I've got a workstation that I've had there for a year now, and I'm still I've just finished building it up completely. Like. Two days ago, four days ago. So now, and I'm record, but I already and recorded like two pieces with it. I'm gonna record more, but it's uh, very complex. But <laughs> sometimes it just well. takes a long time for me to get into the things that I that I have. And it's a bit like uh, 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 it's a bit like you know that scene from Indiana Jones with the when when they take like the 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 Ark of the Covenant in the end mm. into this huge warehouse. Mm. It's a bit like that. <laughs> oh yeah, God. I just with all, the, say, with all the instruments that I've got in my archives that are like <laughs> rare and I want to tell stories about. But yeah, yeah, there's just there's only like it takes a week for me at least to record a video and make it make it so it's all there. So then there's only so many weeks in the year. It's true. 
And then you also uh, are you are also working on your albums. <laughs> I'm working on albums. I'm working on remixes. I'm working on soundtracks. I'm working on other things. So it's always yeah. a lot of things. So yeah, they try you to do... not to get into the situation where I'm completely overbooked, which happens, of course, from time to time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we need to think of our families. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I also make software. <laughs> That's the new thing. That was the new pandemic thing that I started making software. Oh, what kind of software? Music software. So I've got a bunch of plugins. Like uh, I made uh, with Spitfire, I made Landfill Totems. Uh, I made mm. um, a an, an, uh, synthesizer called Fundamental. And with... Um, Audio thing. I just released Gong Amp, which is a, a, a virtual amplifier, a version of a of an amplifier from 1932, which was used mm -hmm. on this Martin Noor. And then I also did a version of this lovely Soviet wire recorder here. I love Soviet wires. stuff. <laughs> and uh, then I did a thing uh, called Motors, which was based on the Crystal Palace, a device that the BBC Radiophonic Workshop used. So there is um, a lot of things. I'm just working on like bunch of new things and especially with audio thing i'm gonna keep on working on more <laughs> it's just yeah. it's lovely to create tools that solve like personal needs to have mm -hmm. like something like that wire recorder in the computer it's ah, it's great because <laughs> let me show you like the worst word that i know right now or, like for this in my studio is this one it's probably like mirrored here but it's called dratris <laughs> is it, is it? means is it uh, the wire is broken. The wire is broken because the wire is like, you can't even see it like on the camera because it's thin as a hair. And ah. then when it's like broken, the two spools are not connected anymore. And then you need to rewire them. And this is a task that's very, very finicky. So now I have, whenever a dratris occurs, uh, which sometimes which happens definitely when you use the machine wrong, but sometimes it just happens because this is from mm, this is from the year 1967, so it's a bit old, and uh, yeah, so that's why I am I'm happy to have this now also in the computer and then to share it with others. So that was why wires is great, and then motors. I mean, to do something that only exists like in like two in, like museum never ex you never saw that like nobody else except from the bbc radiophonic workshop had it and they used it basically to sequence all their frequency generators you know so they've got uh one tune to this pitch another to this pitch another to this pitch and then you could step through them in a way that was uh, musical and look on the computer like we partnered up look on the computer rethought the whole idea and made it in real life and we with audio thing that the software version and it's very inspiring mm -hmm. to suddenly have this device or version of it happening again so thank you for sharing that with us because i think we are all happy that you're doing this <laughs> 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 it seems like a lot of work um but it really it's, fun. it's a ton of work it takes like at least three four months to get something like this done yeah I like to talk about these things because I think people that just begin, you know, they try to get their feet into the music scene and find their way of what they really like. And especially I think these days people think success happens overnight, but it takes a lot of work to come to places and a lot of discovering what you really like and what's, yeah, what, what's fitting your style basically. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it seems like you had like a, a long journey already from a young age till now with yeah, long, long. very long <laughs> very yeah. long yeah yeah and what is the moment if you can can think back of something you will never forget that you're like wow that is amazing or maybe it was even like a, a failure in your eyes like oh that was not really going well oh yeah there's one thing i even made a video about that was uh, i think the video is called never tour with vintage gear how i messed up my biggest show that was when we were playing in, I was playing in a band and I was touring like with vintage gear. So I was I was playing like the roads with my right hand and I was playing a Juno 60 up top. And we were opening for uh, the band The Streets in uh, open air. It was a free open air. It was a lot of people there. And I was playing, da-da-da, everything, doing soundtrack. Everything was nice, of course. And then 
playing. And then song one good, song two and song three, everything started to go weird because the synthesizer, the Juno kept like detuning itself all the time. I was like, oh no, what's happening? And the, the drummer looked at me and the singer looked at me and I was like, okay, so I played a chord on the roads, held it down with the sustain pedal, played on the bass and then tried to tune with the little stupid little thing in the back on the Juno. So and play again, very acrobatic, but it didn't help. <laughs> and it was really, oh, I was just, when it was done, I was so devastated, horrible. Um, but then I realized that basically during transport, the whole compartment with the pitch wheel had come loose. So that was basically, I couldn't, tuning wouldn't have helped. It was just the pitch wheel that was rattled and the simple waves uh, of the of the bass, they would just rattle it always a little bit. That was one of the most horrible moments. Another horrible moment, let's go horrible moments, was when I, <laughs> yeah, <let's go. laughs> when I, I did one piece for orchestra. So full orchestra, uh, I think it was 26 players. And uh, I, this was part of a collaboration between um, the theater of part of that theater and the symphonic part, uh, music theater. So uh, big production and I had made all this, like I'd all, all the parts, everything was there, everything was done. I had a friend write them out for me nicely so they would be playable from the get go. And then I, the orchestra came in only like in the last six days of the whole thing. And the actors and everybody was used to like all these fantastic playbacks with MIDI that I had made. So they would time all the actions, there would be no talking. It was a remake of Dr. Mabuse. No, no Dr. Mabuse, Dr. Caligari, Caligari, yes. And uh, they, so it was a silent movie, which was reenacted in theater and reinterpreted. So all their, everything was timed. And especially something like the tuba, that was uh, what the main actress she, uh, who played uh, Dr. Caligari, it was all her movements <laughs> were timed to that instrument. It went through the whole thing. But the tuba player came only on day three <laughs> and he didn't, he saw the notes for the first time and he was like, oh, boom, boom, and, stumbled through that and it was like okay wow okay wow oh, it was only three days of with orchestra sorry three days with orchestra uh -huh. so the first time i heard like this i was this is horrible <laughs> like my, my music like i thought like oh man they can side read it like crazy it's gonna be amazing from the get-go no of course an orchestra has to rehearse <laughs> and uh, but i was i was listening to my music like thinking, this is horrible. What are they doing to my music? Everything sounded like off key and wrong and like my teeth were getting hurt. And I was like going to the conductor, please, he's playing, he's playing half a note off. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's, he's horrible. <laughs> and of course, like, because the orchestra is big, they rotated on all the different players. So every rehearsal in you, it would be horrible. But then uh... I met the piccolo player, the piccolo, I had written some really nice piccolo, uh, piccolo, um, how you say, uh, marimba parts, where like the piccolo flute and the marimba would like interact. Uh, this thing I actually wrote on the modular and then transcribed. But then I met him and he was like, ah, oh, you're the composer. Nice music. Gonna sound good uh, on the premiere. I was like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so no no I have no recordings of that because like I tried to record I wanted to ask I, I tried to record the uh the the dress rehearsal and mm -hmm. the microphones that I used they fried the, like the power supply I was using vintage microphones stupid as I am so they <laughs> the power supply exploded and then I only had a zoom and uh the zoom recording of a bad performance it was like i, I don't want to listen to that again but yeah it sounded good on the on the premiere but that's why like okay it was that was a really big experience but fun thing is i took like a lot of the recordings that i made during the rehearsals from the orchestra and they became the basis of two records and uh the um, i basically remixed myself again and from that time on, I think it was right after Ashes, I was able to make ambient music with no beats. Before I would always have a little like tick -a -tick -a -boom -boom, something there. From that moment on, no, I don't need to put any rhythm in there. It can just be very floating. So that's something that, that a relief that I got from 
making this. So it was because mm -hmm. it was one of like the life goals to write once write for orchestra. That's such a good goal. <laughs> I love that goal. And how long is that ago? I think it was like 2013 or something, or 2050. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't actually. Yeah. I like kind of like I, 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 it's very blurry. <laughs> like uh, when I, I, I try to put numbers on things, 2014, yeah. 15. I don't. It's like when the record that I made from that was called the Evening Hopefuls, and about like half a year before that came out, I think that was it. Mm -hmm. Wow. But like, yeah, you have those those experiences that you actually just like very slowly want to walk away from, <laughs> and yeah. you know, like it will be a next time again. But how do you overcome? Like, how do you get courage again to just like, okay, you know, whatever happens? Oh, or that's like, like something I played a lot of, played live a lot. So that's okay. just happened. So I played live so much, and that you have a bad show, next show, good. Like the worst thing is to only have like one show. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. So if you only have one show, of course you're gonna suck because it takes usually it takes like one or two or three shows to get like in the groove and stuff like that, and then you really like upgehung mate. Oh, it's a good word. Like mm. you're like, uh, uh -huh. it's like uh, it's, it's, I think it comes from butchers when they have like a, a bacon and they put it like they to, uh, to smoke, and if it's upgehung, yeah. it's like okay, so now it's good. Now it's good, and uh, probably smoked, probably maybe. It's a creative translations here, but yeah, so that's what happened. But if you only have one show a year or two, or you don't have them, don't it's get there's so much expectation then on that thing. So, but if you yeah. already have the next thing, you're like, oh, next show tomorrow, next show next week, you're always like, okay, yeah. so that's what you learn. Also, like with theater, there were plays that absolutely sucked, so and uh, I worked with and sometimes that just happens so you spend all mm -hmm. this time you spend all this work and all this energy and all these people come together and then something comes out and it just sucks because things didn't interlock correctly and yeah you go on to the next one it's yeah it's just live. what you do yeah <laughs> same yeah. like how I like to work I record I record more music than I could ever release but I only mm -hmm. pick the best things for releases. So for every one track that I release, there's five or six underneath that like didn't make the cut. Right. And are those different like uh, variants from that? Or is it just an another song that didn't make it to the album? Sometimes it's, some, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes you have an idea and you try to follow it. And sometimes that idea doesn't work out. Sometimes yeah. you think like, it happens to me like, one thing that my whole process based around here is to shut off the brain a bit. So, or this like what I want. So the want is good to get rid of for me because then once I do that, it becomes too technical, too unfelt, too when it's just something that I do and I'm in the moment, it's all like this. I try to play everything live. So it's a flow experience also. So I'm doing like all these expert decisions without overthinking while when I work, when I worked like with endless tracks and stuff like that, endless da 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 da, I just was super overthinking all the time. So I tried to simplify myself by just working with a stereo track in the end and playing something, playing the mixer. That works really well. So I think I lost track right now. <laughs> <laughs> me too, a little bit. I tried I'm to guilty. Get rid of overthinking. That's the thing. So yeah. I mean. But are you creative every day? Like, can you create every day? Uh, some days I don't because I mean like some I usually want to but sometimes uh, I've been like uh, doing a lot of things in recent re recent weeks just like that feels like self-care but it's like getting the studio set up again mm. so we and taking out all the stuff that doesn't work and like assigning it okay so this will have to go to service this will have to go to service <laughs> this doesn't work or this doesn't even work in the setup so I'm not using this so this goes out and uh, that's something that has been very important, actually. So I built up this space nicely and testing it out yesterday was amazing with someone else because almost everything worked. And uh, it was also easy to access. So I even like, duck, 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 oh, where is it now? So there's no like these moments of like, I don't know where patch, blah, blah, blah. blah. No, just it works as an instrument, the whole studio. And then I built up a second studio downstairs for the for the record for the preparation of the recordings and working on these other things. So 
it's kind of like the preparation to be creative. <laughs> so, yeah, which is exactly. nice. But since I'm addicted to the dopamines that I get when I'm creative, it feels like I've done <laughs> nothing. I've done Aww. nothing this day. So <laughs> I need to quickly record something sometimes. Uh, sometimes I sit and okay, so now I just want to connect the MIDI so I can do it. And suddenly, uh, oh, track is happening. Crazy. So it's, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm creative most of the days, I think, because I'm just a junkie for it. I'm really addicted. Yeah. 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 I think it's a, a good, like a more healthier addiction, <laughs> I guess. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, next to it, you have also like YouTube and you probably have some, a lot of different things. So maybe that's helping you to be creative in the moments you want to be creative. Um, because yeah, like, definitely. I can always switch to different things what I want to do. Like two days ago was just like, I was just, I spent half the day just sound designing for the next uh, plugin that I'm doing. And that's so fun to, to just design sounds and think, okay, what will people use these for? So I'm going to be interested in that. So that's something that's very fun. And uh, I don't have a piece after that, but I've made tools. So, and I've made sounds and it's very, and then I do, um, I, I do scripting. I started scripting my videos and that's also very fun. So to write down, think it out. And it's like half a day of work or a day maybe, and then it's done. And it feels also good, but it's another thing that's related to the thing. And um, mm -hmm. sometimes I just spend like, okay, so now I'm going to take three days and just uh, just um, uh, just record something. For example, when I got this synthesizer behind me, mm -hmm. the cover star of the synth gems, huh? the Chroma uh. S2, uh, always dropping, always be dropping. Uh, so um, now um, I, I locked myself in here and just recorded for two and a half days and recorded 23 tracks of which six I think were actually good enough to be released and will come out this year on an, on an, on an album because this, yeah. this thing is so beautifully broken. It's broken in all the right ways that uh, it inspired me to record and I was afraid to even open the window because I felt like the inspiration would escape because it was <laughs> mental. I mean like 23 tracks in two and a half days. So It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. And, yeah. And I, decent. <laughs> yes. Well, it sounds really great. And I can imagine for like a few people or maybe a bigger group, it can be super overwhelming, like where to start. Like you have a, like you collected a museum right now, which is super cool. And it seems no, like you're also museum, Definitely. <laughs> that's the thing. It's not. That's one thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I know there's a tendency among people that also are on YouTube to start museums. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, I, this is an instrumentarium. I mean, I don't know if that's even an English mm -hmm. word. That's, but it means like this is all active. So all of these things are active. Or yeah. they are planned to be used and demonstrated. And then I'll see if I can fit them in my setup. If not, they're getting sold. Um, if they can, someone just garbage that nobody ever wants. But uh, this is, I can just pull these out for different ideas. Because this is, after all, the studio is designed to be made for scoring. So that's uh, my main job, basically. So I score yeah. music, I score films, score media, score games, score theater. So I need a lot of different textures, a lot of different tools to create worlds. Sometimes this world requires this sound. Sometimes this world requires this sound. And I can just go there, take that thing and be here. And sometimes it's even perfect when the director is here and then I'm, okay, so that's the world. Okay, I've got this thing from this and then I tell the story of the thing and then, aha, uh -huh, okay. And then we record and it becomes very, very direct in a way that I can interact with directors. So that's why also yeah. there's this, this chair, like behind, there's a big chair nice. for the, for the for clients basically <laughs> so where they can sit and i can i can work and right and uh so that's why everything here is part of like yeah the orchestra that i've here and uh it's fun I also, yesterday i got to sit in there because our cosmos is so much better at editing she's crazy good in ed editing keeping all the all the tracks on the keeping the project like locked down and keeping it tight and good and making it uh -huh. sound good that I was just okay no you you do I I just I, I got to sit in that that was <laughs> such a cool experience it's very comfortable that chair <laughs> it seems like <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But uh, yeah, so actually, it's just a big toolbox. You have like a big toolbox yeah, exactly. with all Not a museum. That's yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, let's skip the museum. <laughs> um, so I was actually wondering. So we have. I think a lot of people have an aim to reach something. What you reached right now, like you're super inspiring. You're multi-talented, and yes, there are you. so many great things coming from you. And yeah, it's inspiring. So what would you give as advice for people that just starting off with music? What would be like something you would tell your smaller self? Oh, connect. Like try to connect with as many people as possible. That's something that I completely neglected because mm -hmm. I was like in this I it was a small town. I was in a small town and I didn't uh, in the south of Germany and I didn't reach out. There was no internet. So I... I and I was into all this weird music and stuff like that. So there wasn't much of a scene. Like the scene at the time was all about, um, yeah, it was lots of jazz, funk and stuff like that and rock. But there was a scene for that down there, but not for what I wanted to do. And I basically, I think I lost a lot of time by not being active in scenes and connecting with people. And that's something that uh, when I then moved to study in Hamburg, I connected with scenes and became part of them. And then enables you to do all these things because people have walked these paths before and there are existing like touring networks there are people that have hey you want to play here i've got this project i've got this project you want to join and you connect and that is the best thing you can ever do for your music is connect with other people and also do things like putting on shows like when i was in berlin my wife had a big spot uh, in the form of brewery, which amazing acoustics, actually. And so we put on modular shows there, part of basic electricity. And it was so cool to, to be able to host all these artists there and put on shows and yeah, be the host for a show instead of playing the show. Gives you another mm -hmm. perspective. And it's like giving back to the whole community. And that is so helpful that's the best thing you can ever do and it helps you grow in any way as a musician and as a person so connecting it's very easy to not connect and it's very especially in now times it's hard to mm. connect um through the internet it's super good but once you get these internet connections into real life meetups it's just amazing same with i said our cosmos or with all these other people that i've met through the time like when i'm able to to connect with people in real life and then do real life projects like i'm playing sonar festival together with cuckoo and look no computer and uh, so we're we're organizing a big project around that and we first met on the internet and then i met both of them separately like uh, in london and in uh, in oslo and now we're coming together it's uh, lovely Oh, uh, it sounds really good it sounds really warm and i feel like a lot of producers around us we like to be in our own studio and make music and think and i think it, it's really good to connect yeah that's such a great tip yeah. um yeah <laughs> um i think i got a few questions in the question i hope if i press this that nothing goes wrong okay so um i hope you don't mind i'm gonna ask you some questions from the people here okay uh, Okay, let's choose this one. Do your records to tape or digital? Uh, both. Whatever, like, the, whatever it requires. Like, uh, Schlaufenzeit, um, I had to halt recording, for example, because I want to record it onto uh, Stereo Nagra, but that's broken. So I put it on hold, and I'm just, like, working on, working on playing a bit and preparing things and still, but I really want that sound for that. For other things, um, when I really want to construct something, I love the flexibility of digital. But mm -hmm. when I um, do my, uh, how you say, uh, like playing the mixing board and everything, it usually records straight to a stereo tape machine. So I do right. both. It just depends yeah. on the situation and what I'm achieve, what I want to achieve. Yeah. It seems like you use everything. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Yeah, like broad. Exactly. The more, more is love more. That. It's, it's like I, oh, I, I tend that. to, I tend to very much, I tend, I love taking everything and then deciding, take from everything. So nice. there's no, I'm not a purist. I definitely am not a purist. I just 
it's nice to be focused. That's why all these things, like one thing that my studio is, is organized in these little islands, for example. So I've got mm -hmm. this part that can, uh, this part can be on its own. This part can be on its own. The Soviet corner can be on its own and even record on a Soviet tape machine only. So I've got this kind of like very, uh, it's something that I can do just as a thought experiment and to stay in that flow and like to imagine how would they have done it like back in the 80s in the Soviet Union. But uh, then of course I can connect it to a modular synthesizer and uh, the piano, for example, it's all, everything is like connected yet it can be just mm -hmm. its own. I don't need to think about um, like a master controller or anything. Mm -hmm. There's no MIDI in the studio yet. <laughs> So, well, I think it's great. Um, let me think here. What was the first time you thought, maybe I can make a living out of this weirdness? <laughs> I love that uh, one. <laughs> I never thought I could make a living out of this. It was really, it was really <laughs> doubtful because like, my parents also thought, yeah, it's just, that's not, not worth it, making music. It's, I was thinking like, um, I hope I just get to spend as much time with music as possible. So mm -hmm. that's the whole make music to make more music. So I can, my goal was then like the first job I got right out of university was just working for a reseller of high-end studio equipment, a very small outfit in Hamburg, still lovely people. And I said, I'm going to work three days there. So I worked three days and spent the rest for music. But at the same time, my theater career already started. So I started making theater and theater is very, uh, very time intensive. So I quickly left that job to pursue like the theater and theater was the first time where I thought, oh, I'm actually making money with that. And it seems very stable because it's government funded and it's possible to make a decent income as a musician. And because due to the legal situation that is in Germany that divides between like uh, entertainment music and ernst mm. music, like serious music where you're supposed to frown mm. apparently, uh, you get more GEMA. So like even like uh, if, yeah. the, if, the, if the play is good and gets many performances, I get paid like a hundred bucks per performance. So that's something also nice. So suddenly you ask, okay, so this can be, this is the first time I was actually like making all my income from music was with the theater. And what happened then of course is that culture budgets are cut, 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 cut. And only like the big cities are like, ooh, thriving. And the other smaller parts are going down. So I thought, oh, this is not, this is not sustainable <laughs> again. So I came from this music industry, like that was in decline into theater, which yeah. is stable, then theater is in decline. <laughs> then I went to uh, YouTube and uh, then to make the software and making, yeah. The good thing wow. is I managed, one thing that I managed is that I can make anything anything musically that I like right now. I'm just, Heinbach was something that I basically just did after the last band folded, um, or the, the, the last big band that I had. And it was never supposed to make me any money. It was just my leisure project for, uh, because I was making money from the theater. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems like passion brings you somewhere, hey? Yeah, definitely. I, I, can, I can, yeah, I can have the passion and yeah, hanging out with people, meeting them, that's, that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do a last question here uh, because I'm holding you up for so long. I'm so sorry. I can talk oh, with no, you for ages. Like <laughs> oh, okay, that's good. I'm going to Q&A to film. I'm going to talk more, more and more. Nice. Okay. Maybe we just have to invite you back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Um. Do you use tools to jam with others, other musicians in distance with internet? No. No? No. I don't. No. We, you just like to hang with each other and just actually jam together. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's way more fun. Yeah. Like, I find, like, one thing that doesn't work for me is, like, can you set me some loops and I make something that never works? So mm. that never works out for me. But when, once, once I'm in a room with people, it just works. So... It's yeah. so different because yeah. yeah, doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, it was a short one. Maybe another one. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, last question. We can, we can do. You can do three. Come on. Three. <laughs> okay. I'll three try questions. To keep myself short. I try, I try to short myself. <laughs> no and yes allowed. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see if people have some questions. Otherwise, I'm gonna go to the question box in here. Okay, I'm just going to read this up. It's a bit of a long one. So playing live gigs a lot and consistently helps overcoming fears. 
and develops character. Now that live gigs are diminishing, what would you suggest to substitute doing live gigs to gain experience? Communities. Like if you've got like a community where you can get together with other people and exchange music with others or like work with other people. That's the, the smallest group at least you can do. Show them, the, show them your stuff, ask for feedback and try to get like this kind of thing going. Maybe do it, for some people, live streams might even work. Like if you've got a good idea for that, but it has to be like, I think live streams are very cool if they are interactive. If you can make an interactive yeah. live stream, then it super, works super nice. But anything else where it's just like basically a filmed show becomes boring fast. Mm, so you mean just with lights or something with uh, visuals or... No, I you mean, mean like, you, yeah, or... exactly. it's just like a filmed live show where there's no audience feedback, uh -huh. you know? Because that's the yeah. nice thing that this enables us. Like it enables direct connection and interaction. So if you can do that with your show, that's lovely. So it can yeah. be as simple as doing a Q&A afterwards or like requesting, but it can also be like audience requests for tracks and stuff like that. Many ideas you can develop and get feedback on. And yeah. Yeah, community is important. Yeah. Um... Any hints for the next audio thing, VST? Love the gong and wires. I'm not going to drop a hint. No, I can't. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. Just, except no, 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 I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to tease too much. I don't want to. Uh, no. It's uh, no, no. That's all good. It's we, we will just wait for it and we will yeah, see yeah. the drop. It's not, and it's not that, that like... far off. It's not that far off. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> How do you deal with distractions? It's the last question we have. Uh, I don't get very much distracted. It's hard to get me, it's hard to get me distracted. I just shut everything off. So yeah, I'm very, I can, I can like zone in and then I'm completely in my world and I can be walking and I, I yeah, it's sort distracted. of hyper focus. Like, like you're totally, you're actually not really here anymore. <laughs> you're exactly. just there I'm with there. music. I'm, just, I'm in my head. Yeah. That's the same. My father had the same thing. He was a professor for uh, English and he would walk around and he would, just, would like, he wouldn't even notice you. So it was okay because he's just thinking about something and that's the same. I'm completely the same with that. I'm just in my head and there's, it's really hard to crack that open. So, and sometimes. Beneficial for making music. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think we come to an end. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was just so, so amazing to talk to you. I was really looking forward to it. And I think you gave us so much, so much advice. Um, and I hope everyone loved it as well. And you loved it, of course. I have fun, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, so we have also a winner because it's January. Um, and we give away a book and it will be QB music. I don't know if I say it right, but he won a book. So we Bravo. will send it. <laughs> it's the shopping book, the St. James probably. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, you know what where? I'm going to do after this? Huh? No. I'm going to unbox another synthesizer. I bought a dream synthesizer and I'm going to unbox it right after this. Oh. No, yeah, well, hopefully we see some on YouTube video or something. <laughs> yeah, def def probably. I mean, that's one of the justifications I use to buy these things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. We're looking forward. All right. Uh, I'm going to wish you a really lovely day because it's here in the night. But you have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see each other soon, maybe with Superbooth. Ah, that would be lovely. Yes, definitely. Cool. That's have cute. a beautiful day. You too. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>